Um, so first of all, uh, welcome in everyone to the first episode, if you can call it that, of the Life Behind the Trig podcast with myself, Kyle, Kyle Randalls, <laughs> and uh, Sinclair uh, Patience. This is something we've been talking about doing for years and it's one of those things that we've eventually just kind of grabbed and decided we were going to try. This will be something we'll probably do, what, weekly just now? I think so, Kyle, yeah. I reckon uh, if we go one a week, there's no games this summer, so um be good to get get on the podcast once a week. We could uh, we could jump on and do it three times a week, an average of three games a year. Uh, a week, sorry, rather. Three games a week over the summer. <laughs> I know, I mean, I, I, was, uh, I was still slightly optimistic we'd have one or two, but I don't think that's going to be the case. How many games did you do last summer? I think I just tackled 40. That's, that's, high a, 30, so that's a, that is a good number of games. I was struggling last year with uh, little Rosie arriving, kind of locked me down for a month before and then six months after. So I was I was under 10 games last year, which was tough going, but um, I kept seeing your name everywhere. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, well, I mean, I did do that map thing where I, 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 like, I posted every games I'd done. You and did. Sort of, you it, was, did. it was quite interesting. And then... I remember Lucas coming to training and he was like, Oh, I did five more than you. I was like, Oh, okay. Um I'm sure I'm sure hearing stories of like Alistair Garn and Francis Bremner doing about fifty to the fifty five games. I'm madness. sure. I think Ryan Vieira as well was uh, was always right up there, but I think they were pretty much full time on games. So Lucas is quite similar, eh? He's yeah. He's just hammering them all summer. I remember at one point trying to claim that I'd done like 50 games a year, but um, 12 of them were me doing the Glen Fiddick in the morning, then the same in the afternoon. I'm not sure that counts. Yeah, I think it does. It does. It's a weird one, the Glen Fiddick, because uh, I think for, for Scottish boys, it's how a lot of um, a lot of throwers get into the games. But you can't really start till you're, uh, I th- think it's 18, isn't it? Because you can win whiskey as prizes. So Yeah, legally, yeah. Uh, whiskey's a... I mean, it's part of your lunchbox as well, so... You know exactly, I mean? aye. You get your wee miniatures. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, yeah. You, yeah. There was always... A, there, was probably, there was always a running joke that uh, you you seem <laughs> to do the tw- under 25s for about 50 years. Uh, well, I can let you in on a secret. It was actually um, Willie Robertson, for those that don't know you, that was who introduced me to the games. Um, to say he was a character would be an understatement. Uh, he he told me when I was about 16 to come up and do a Glen Fiddick games and I think it was Old Meldrum and I didn't know any better, we turned up and he went over and spoke to the, uh, I think it was Libby at the time and he'd obviously told her I was 18 and this and that and I was just chatting away and I think I only managed to get a prize and I think the hammer Yeah. Um, and at the end of the day I got my whiskey and then he was like oh I'll be taking that and then I, I don't know who it was, it might have been yourself or John but somebody was like oh so what age are you Kyle blah 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 and I was like oh I'm 16 <laughs> So I think that's why. I think was, that's how that joke started, actually, because it, it, it did seem like you were there for a long, long time. That, that's how the illusion uh, came about. W- Willie, Willie sort of started you out. Eh? He was, uh, but you, you kind of came from athletics more, didn't you? Yeah. So basically, I, uh, I mean, here's here's a joke to start off this story. So I started out as a sprinter uh, with athletics. Um, believe it or not, I've like, got, you still you still play on the wing, do you not? Center, mate, number twelve with rugby, right? That's where, that's where the glory the glory is to be had. But uh, my, my my sort of journey through throwing um, started out as a sprinter uh, when I was nine. Nine, I started uh, running for the Falkirk Harriers, which are based in my local town of Falkirk. I competed there in like one hundreds, two hundreds. Then started doing indoors and found that I don't know if I've got wonky legs, but running in the Kelvin Hall on the indoor track, I just seemed to be pretty good at it. So I actually had Scottish records from, I think it was under under 11 for the second year, which was the age group. So it was under 11, under 13, under 13, then under 15. Did uh, you? I uh, actually Scot- didn't know that. Uh, yes, Scot- gold at the Scottish Champs, and I think uh, the team I was in had Scottish records. Uh, for one, 60 or for 100? Oh, no, it was 200. The Kelvin oh, Hall, you know, the indoors, the 200. Yeah, so yeah, fun yeah. fact, one of my team members throughout that period was actually Grant Penderleaf. I'm sure you know him. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah well, sorry. I went to Loughborough there, what, twenty sixteen, and he was, uh, he was, he's still running, isn't he? Yeah, that's still what I mean. I, th- I think he's the only person from the teams that's still uh, involved with athletics. Um, yeah, yeah. He's uh, he's quick as well. He's oh, getting yeah. quicker too. He, I know. Because he, he must is he the same age as you then? I think he's slightly older than me. So you know, in athletics, you have like uh, you have like an under thirteen first year and then a second year. Yeah. So yeah, whenever I was yeah. in the first year, he was in the second, but we were the same year at school. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, but yeah, basically. Anyway, yeah, yeah. I I did the I did the sprinting, and then I started getting a lot taller, 
and I've put on um, quite a bit of weight in Certain Incredible Bulk joke. Um, I was going to say, it was just <laughs> the first Incredible Bulk. <laughs> <laughs> so I put on a fair bit of weight and then Willie came up to me and was like, have you ever tried throwing? I was like, oh, I've done a bit of short part like when whenever the club needed me. He goes, I mean, I'm watching you run. He says, I think you'd be much better fitted to throwing. So I started doing a bit of short part, a bit of hammer, a bit of discus. Uh, and the one thing he always said to me was, you're not going to pick a throwing event and start doing it yet. We'll wait till you're like under 17. So yeah. I uh, started out doing putt, uh, reluctantly discus and uh, the hammer, the, the wire hammer, the Olympic hammer. Um, and I remember throwing them, throwing them, throwing them. And I ended up basically falling in love with uh, the wire hammer. Uh, I competed for Scotland at like um, age group level for the Scottish schools, the UK schools. I did all that uh, all that nonsense, uh, and then I remember getting handed a Scots hammer for the first time when I was fourteen. And Millie was like, "Go and throw that," and I think he gave me a sixteen. And I remember throwing at a hundred feet, and I did, didn't mean anything to me at the time, but it was like, "That's not a bad throw. That's not a bad throw." And <laughs> was that with no spikes or anything? Uh, that was no spikes, no way. Uh, it, it did get me to use tacky, and then it gave me no no equipment or the the, the ability to take it off. Yeah, um, yeah. So I was running about with Taki for like a day. Uh, but yeah, I, I've basically been throwing hammer since I was 14, which is now 14 years. I just turned 28 uh, at the end of the last year. Um, my first Highland oh, Games is a story. <laughs> uh, Willie told me I was going to an athletics competition. I got in the car with him at his house. I got dropped off by my mum, I think. I think I was 15. And he, he took me along to what I assume was a, an athletics competition that turned out to be Shots Highland Games. And we walked in and I thought, oh, strange, there's loads of pipe bands and people in kilts at an athletics uh, competition. And if you've ever been to Shots, it's a a football stadium you actually compete in. And I walked into the field and he walked out and I was like, oh, well, he's got his kilt with him. And then all of a sudden it dawned on me. And here's a a story for you. So there was four of us competing. If I remember correctly, it was uh, Jason, myself, I think the third person... I want to say it was Gregor Edmonds, and then the fourth uh, person. Do you know who it was? It was Hamish Davidson. Ah, oh, nice, nice. And, uh, you uh, see, so it's probably worth saying shots is an amateur game. So in Scotland, um, there's always been quite a divide. Not so much now because at the end of the day, we we all win prize money. But I think with with the amateur professional divide, it used to be pretty strict. And if you um, competed amateur, you couldn't then compete in professional games. So. Uh, I came up the same way as you um, through amateur games, but I'll let you go on about your your, your first game. So, hey, shots. <laughs> yeah, uh, I finished. Uh, I finished third overall, and I managed to beat uh, Hamish and everything bar the caber uh, because I'd <laughs> never I'd never really touched a caber before in my life. And Hamish must have been getting on by then, though. Eh? Oh, it must have been what in his late fifties, sixty. Yeah, like, uh, not quite. It might might have been definitely fifties. Yeah, that'd have been yeah. two thousand and six, two thousand and seven. Yeah, he'd have definitely been in his fifties, um, but he was pretty, pretty infamous, Hamish. I'm sure we'll do a, a completely separate podcast on the the stories of of Hamish M. Davidson, <laughs> Sir Sir Hamish M. Davidson, if you please, Sir Hamish M. Davidson. That's the one. Um, the third overall, your first ever games isn't bad. Uh, well, three out of four. So technically, I beat someone, even if it was a, a an an older thrower, but. Uh, he basically said he was just there to chance his arm, and that was the first time I met Hamish. Um, but yeah, beyond that, as, as I said, Willie got me sort of to to go up and try the my hand at Old Meldrum in the what we call the Glenfiddich Championship. Other than that, I sort of dotted about all the the amateur games, as you said, because m- most of the games down this way were amateur. Um, or they yeah. come, is it SAL they call them the SAL games. I think it's I think it's is it Scottish Athletics something, or something. They're, they're governed by Scottish Athletics, but. Yeah, I, was, I was the same up up north, started with amateur games, because as a kid I was obviously dragged, every week dragged around Highland Games with my, with my dad, <laughs> um, but then I didn't really seriously start throwing, I, I got into rugby, um, moved moved away to university and played played rugby at a decent level for sort of close to 10 years, and my first year kind of back into Highland Games seriously was 2009. Um, and I went on my first ever kind of overseas trip with that to Minnesota. I think oh, it was yeah, I've for been the there as well. <laughs> amateur worlds. Ah, that's right. You've you've been over. Is it Kevin? Kevin Dupuy. Kevin Dupuy. Yeah, in Florida. Uh, he's a good good guy. Good guy. So went over there and uh, threw against a number of guys: Jeremy Gillingham, 
Nathan Nathan Burchett, Ryan <laughs> Stewart, so really good field, but um, managed to managed to win that, which was a good good first trip to be honest. Uh, ever, ever since then, things have been pretty uh, pretty challenging with the trips, but now that was a a really good trip. And would that probably would that one be kind of, the Would that be the same year I threw against you at uh, Bathgate Highland Games? Well, I, yeah, I was just about to say. I think that was because so it was after that. I think that year. I'd mainly been doing uh, the under twenty five circuit, but I I also threw in a couple of uh, a couple of amateur games as well. So, yeah, I, I think that was probably the first time we threw against each other was two thousand and nine, um, and then obviously you you then started throwing in the the under twenty fives, but by that point I was already up to the to the professional circuit because I think I jumped to under 25s at like 22 or something i was i was quite young yeah and at that stage if, if you'd won it once you weren't allowed to stay in so i think it's a really good like kind of breeding ground for for young throwers that the the the, the sort of original idea behind it was that it would protect kind of young guys from uh from getting hurt through throwing a heavy hammer or heavy shot 56 so you only really threw the light events, but in actual fact, what, what started happening for for guys like you and I did it as well, Craig Sinclair before that, um, is you would throw all morning and then you'd stay and throw all afternoon. So you're, you're probably <laughs> actually at more danger than than you would be by uh, just throwing in the afternoon. But it's, I think it's, most. It's funny you oh, say that. Know, I, I went from being one of those uh, people who'd throw in the morning and throw the afternoon, and then what five six years ago, I, I've moved into the sort of senior things. And then I went from wanting to throw in the afternoon to every time one of the juniors wants to throw, I'm like, that's an extra two hours on my day. Yeah, it's true, it's true. I, th- I think what they should go back to and uh, what it used to be was that if you won an event in the morning, you could then compete in that event in the afternoon, just that one event. Yeah. And that kind of made sense because what, you, what you've had over the last five, six years is you, you usually have five or six under 25 staying for the afternoon. So straight away that's kind of add in a good hour and a half to two hours to your day. I've seen myself kind of leave the field about quarter to seven at <laughs> Glenfiddich Games, um, which which isn't the best. You know, it's a, it's a tough day Especially when it goes on for that long. Imagine if that's your Saturday and you're competing the Sunday. Exactly, I know, which we often are, eh? When, yeah. when we're kind of, well, especially you doing 40 games. <laughs> oh, I know, uh, I know. <laughs> that's tough. I think my, my most ever is about 25. Um, I've just never... With with working, I've always struggled just to get the time to to do that many games. Because out of your forty, I bet fifteen would probably be midweek. Eh, uh, there'd be at least ten. Put it that way, yeah. Yeah, and you just take your holidays around those. Yeah, I take holidays or uh, on occasion I can get unpaid leave from my work. Um, just as long as uh, I give sort of enough notice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw. Uh, just going back to the under twenty fives, we mentioned you, you win whiskey, but I saw you da. Uh, a fairly good collection uh, from from over the last kind of five six years. Eh? Ah, so basically, I mean, we're all in sort of lockdown and quarantine, and basically just now in uh, you know social distancing and all that nonsense. So Amy decided, you know what, we'll clear the garage. So I went out and I had like, uh, <laughs> you know, you get all your boxes from the council for putting your glass in. Yeah. So yeah. I had like six or seven of these just full of whiskey, and I decided, you know what, let's pull them out and see what I've got. So. Um, I tried to find the year I first won it and I've managed to get every bottle there. I've still got them, so I've put them in a box themselves. And then I was messaging Jamie, uh, Jamie Gunn, for anybody who doesn't know who I'm talking about. Uh, myself and Jamie, we came through the under-25s about the same time. So there was a few bottles that he was missing and I had spares off and sort of vice versa. So we're going to do a swap, so we've both got a full like a full set. It's a good idea, then get them on uh, get them on eBay from there. Absolutely. <laughs> that's, 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 that's the plan. D- does, Lucas, uh, does Lucas still actually have any... Of the whiskey that he's won, or, or have they all gone on eBay? I know he's <laughs> definitely got a few, uh, and really? I, I think there's a few that he gives to sort of his friends back and uh, back 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 home when he goes back over Christmas and and whatnot. Yeah. He's de- he's given my dad a few as well. <laughs> oh, has he? Again, yeah. folks, we're talking about uh, Lucas Vent. I don't think he drinks whiskey himself, but he cer- certainly likes a vodka. <laughs> I'll never forget uh, one of the one of the occasions where I was staying at Harry's, and uh, <laughs> I remember him the next day telling uh, Ryan and uh, David. Yeah, uh, that that he'd been he'd, he'd opened up a fifteen or an eighteen year old Glen Fiddick had won and he was mixing it with cola. Jesus, uh, I know he just isn't not bothered. Not no, he bothered. wasn't. He wasn't too bothered about it. But yeah, 
Um, for anyone who doesn't know, Lucas is my training partner. Um, he's a, a Polish, uh, a Polish fella, a really good guy. He's moved over here. How many years ago now? Six, seven years ago. He must, yeah, he must be close to ten years because obviously S- Sebastian Venta is Lucas's big brother, and and he came over first uh, through D- Douglas Edmonds because he Sebastian came second, the world's strongest man, um, and I think it was about two thousand and seven. And from there, he then he then came over and started throwing. So when I first got into the professional games, I, I feel like I've seen kind of a number of different eras of, of thrower. So started out, and, and it was guys like uh, sort of the, the Aitken brothers. Hamish was still occasionally kicking about. <laughs> Stephen King was still still throwing hammers pretty far. Um, and America, the American boys that would come over at that time would be Sean Betts, Larry Brock, um, so that was kind of one one era of Thor, and then moving on from there, it, it kind of switched. And Bruce Robb was was sort of, sort of dominating Highland Games in Scotland for for a good few years. Um, but then Gregor and, and Sebastian kind of came on the scene as well, just around that time, kind of two thousand and nine, two thousand and ten. I think two thousand and ten was when Gregor maybe set his world record. Were you there at Mark Kinch that so- day? I, I wasn't I wasn't at Mark Inch, but I was at his house with Willie um afterwards. Oh, okay. And I remember yeah, yeah. never being so impressed with someone uh, eating a takeaway. I think he had like two <laughs> chips and curry sauce, two mains and some some other side and it just all went in one bowl and I remember my mind being blown watching him eating it. I was like, Wow, I could never do that and then here I am fourteen years later and that's the norm. <laughs> that's that's a starter. <laughs> <laughs> Well, is that is that what uh, is that how the incredible bulk came about? Oh, just about. I, I mean, I don't know if you want to discuss that another point, or you want me going to it just now. Um, that was funny. I, I'm sure. In, I'm sure in one off season, you must have put on about four stone. I, I don't. I, I'm not too good with stone, uh, but I, I know I put on. I think it was fourteen kilos. Um, yeah, yeah. I tore. I tore my pounds. stomach, and then I tore ligaments in my ankle, and I just kept eating like as if I was still training when I wasn't, <laughs> and the weight just <laughs> ploughed on. What um what's your best throwing weight? Do you think? Oh, see, I, I I'm off a mindset that I think the heavier you are, the better your weights will be, and then there's like a middle ground, um, yeah. where you'll be more sort of flexible and loose with the hammers. So there's yeah. like it's like, do you want to be lighter? Do you want to be sort of sitting at a comfortable weight, or do you want to be heavy? So my my most consistent season with the weights was the actually the year of the incredible bulk. That was the the, fir- <laughs> the first time I, I broke uh, eighty feet. I think I broke it three times in one season. Um, yeah. And that's when I actually threw my PB, which was 82.11. Uh-huh. Um, is that then, still your PB, is it? Uh, it is, yeah. Uh, and then yeah. for two years, I couldn't get near 80. And then season just passed, so 2019, I think I got it like five or six times. Um, yeah. Same with the weight of the bar. I think it just feels easier when you've got something to uh, work against it. I mean, mass moves mass, right? Yeah, well, that's always kind of the running joke, isn't it? Mass moves mass, or you can't fire a cannon from a canoe. Absolutely, but um, you're you're right. There's definitely a fine line with it. Like, if you're going in, in pounds for for me, two eighty, two ninety pounds um, is is a good weight. Once you're over three hundred, I'm just too slow. I'm I'm only six one. You you're obviously what six four, six five. Ah, so but seven five. You'll, <laughs> you you'll naturally carry more weight than me. But um, past couple of seasons, I've I've definitely been too heavy and. Um, I'm actually quite enjoying this this sort of time now, um, and there's not going to be many games this summer, so I'm just using that as a bit of an opportunity to to get back to kind of rugby playing shape, um, and I think that's when I when I tend to throw best because looking back as well at, at numbers over the years, you can be really strong and heavy, um, or you can be you can be too light. And more athletic, but you need to find this sort of middle ground, and that's that's kind of where I'll throw best. Like, this is, I think, for for us, it's probably like we we don't always throw the same implements week to week, um, so you still need to be pretty robust, I think, to to compete in the Highland Games. And you do see like a lot of boys will come from an athletics background where they are quite kind of finely tuned and they'll struggle with different surfaces, different implements, different weights. Um, you know, so you do need a certain robustness. I don't I don't mean you need to be heavy, but um to an extent it definitely does help, I would say. You definitely need to be adaptable as well. I mean, if you look at things like the C D stone, so for example, for anyone who doesn't know the C D stone, what weight is that? <laughs> I think it's is it not meant to be a hundred pound? 
So it's, it's, I mean, give or take, let's say a hundred pound, roughly fifty kilograms, not quite, but yeah. Um, and the the ring on that, right? You can throw it like a twenty eight, which is what Sinclair does with his little girl hands. Um, but but I, I struggle <laughs> to get one hand in it, so I throw it like an actual wire hammer. Um, yeah, yeah. And I've seen yeah. people putt it, but I, I honestly, the, the 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 pressure and the strain that goes through your hands when you're throwing that thing is monstrous. But then you go from throwing that to the next day, you'll just throw a fifty six pound weight in a ring, but you're throwing it essentially the same way. So you, exactly. you, you definitely need to be able to adapt to whatever's put out in front of you. See, to be honest, like especially in Scotland, um, like you said, I've 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 got smaller hands than, than a lot of folk, uh, the likes of yourself and, and Lauren and Bruce Robb. Um, but when it comes to throwing the fifty six, not for height, I'll add, <laughs> but for for distance, um, it definitely helps me because a lot of those rings are absolutely tiny, so I can get a thumb and three fingers in, get a decent hook grip on, and uh, tend to do all right with the block weights, whereas some of the some of the bigger guys will struggle just purely due to the size of the, the ring on it. Eh? Absolutely. I mean, I'll use it as an example. I've mentioned this on sort of Instagram, Facebook before. Uh, my training 56 I use has a date stamp on it of like 1836. Yeah, yeah. No, I've got two the same. Because they're they're old farm weights, aren't they? Yeah, that's, I mean that's where it comes from, you know. But that's probably a chat for another time. Um, if I was to ask you, what is your uh, what's your favourite memory of the games or a favourite moment? Probably comes back. So, so like I said, throwing throwing a fifty six. I've, I've had some some decent throws in, in all events over the last few years, but fifty six has probably been been one of my one of my best events. We don't even throw it every games, um, so I don't massively train it, but. There's one for you, right? I, I've said yeah. this. I've been over to America a few times and I've spoke to a few American boys and obviously the 56 is a, a staple of the games there. Yeah, every week. If we were to say one in how many games do you think you, you throw a 56? Like, out of, out of ten? There, there tend to be more at the North games, uh, like the Highlands. Yeah. Grampian, there aren't that many and, and when they are in the competition, they're, they're not part of the Glenfiddich overall points. Yeah. So people don't tend to to always take it that seriously, but I'd say maybe one in four. I think you're probably about, about right. a quarter of our games will have a, a fifty six for distance. Um, but yeah, I think it was two thousand and sixteen. Um, I won the I won the fifty six for distance, and I also won the. And this will come as a massive surprise. I think you were there, though, Kyle. Uh, I won the the open caber. Oh. The, the competition caber. I didn't win the challenge caber. Aberdeen. I won the no. I won the open caber at Bremar. Oh wow! Um, I tied with Scott Ryder in, in the open caber. So I that you, was. Uh, I bet you put that in your CV. For for for, for me, that was a uh, that was a big one because way over the bar and, and caber definitely aren't two of my stronger events. But yeah, I think to to get two event wins at Bremar sort of sort of stands out for for me competition wise. Um, Going back to probably about 2006, uh, I was playing rugby at the time, but I got I got the chance to, to throw my dad, George Patience, um, and it's the only time I've ever done it, but we went up to Castle in May, um, and he uh -huh. still, he, he beat me in the overall that year, <laughs> <laughs> and I must have been about 19, 20, but yeah, he uh, he beat me in the overall. That was the, the last time he ever threw, although I've been trying to get him to pull his spikes back on and uh, throw in the Masters, but I, I don't think he's keen. <laughs> don't think he's keen. I mean, in terms of in terms of if you're asking me sort of best moment or memories, um, I, I'd actually never been to Balloch. For for those of you who don't know, Balloch is uh, also known as like Loch, Lo Loch Lomond uh, Highland Games. It's also the SHGA Worlds. So yeah, I, so it's I went, open, isn't it? Yeah. Anyone can can turn up and compete that world championship. Yeah, so um, I, I went there for the first time last year, and it was probably one of my better days. Uh, yeah. my my putt sort of let me down overall, um, but I won four events, and um, two of them might not be too much of a surprise. But I won both the hammers. I then mm -hmm. wait for this. I then won the twenty eight, and then the fifty six. I think both, I, both for distance, did you? Both I won both of them for distance, but one of them I tied with Scott, and it was Scott's uh, Scott Ryder's first game back. Uh, after sort of injuring himself uh, last season, yeah. I, I might have that the wrong way about. I can't remember if it was the twenty eight we tied or if it was the fifty six, but I ended up winning four events and then I managed to finish uh, second equal with uh, Lucas on the day, which I was quite happy with. Um, it's a good result for a for a world. Yeah, pe people will joke and say it's not really a world, but it, it is a world in my opinion because anyone can turn up on the day. 
albeit you might need to come to Scotland, but um, it's it's still a world title. And if you look at the guys that have won it in the past, none of them are uh, are bad throwers. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I mean, absolutely, and I'll, I'll tell you, it's probably one of the warmest uh, competitions I've had as well. There was just no wind, and it was like a sauna say, sort of standing out there. Uh, but I mean, it was a good competition. The 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 sort of the top five were bouncing about all day, uh, and and yeah, it was a, it was probably one of my my favourite games. Um, That's probably what's helped helped you most over the last few years is that your weights have come up. I remember going back maybe three or four seasons, and and your your weights definitely weren't as strong. Um, I mean, but, but now that your your weights are up there and you're, you've obviously been training with Lucas and your stones have come up a bit too. I, I think that's, uh, you know, in terms of an overall, it puts you in a really really good position. I mean, I, I kind of laughed the last three four years training with Lucas. I, I used to be quite happy with like a seventy foot weight and a forty five foot putt. Like I, that, that put. I mean, I wouldn't be happy, but it put a smile on my face uh, yeah. over say the last yeah. five years. Whereas last year, if I wasn't putting fifty, I was like annoyed at myself. And a good yeah, day, so eight, eight, eighty fifty becomes the the new sort of standard. Eh? Yeah, I mean, genuinely, that's what happened. I mean, towards the end of the year, my my weight just clicked, and I think I threw eighty like five times. Um, yeah, and I was thinking, oh, yeah. PB, I'm gonna get a PB, and then that wasn't to be. And then my my putts now like mid to low fifties is what I, I really want to be about. But I mean, obviously, you always aim for the stars, and you, you know, you know, you, they land on the moon. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's um, you've you've obviously switched to the to the glide. I've seen you throw pretty far with a a modified South African front on as well. That's what I'll tend to stick with, and all going well. I'll, I'll you know I'll usually be over fifty, and I think can at best I think in Creef I've, I've hit a a fifty four. Um, I quite like the front on. I feel like even even if you're tired some days. If things, you know, if you get in the right position, you you'll, just kind of thump it, you'll right? hit it well. Whereas I feel with a glide, you kind of need to be be on the ball the whole time. And if you're tired, it's it's much tougher See, for a guy my size anyway. For, for you, because you've got longer levers, it, it, it might be slightly different. But if you've not got that pop for the glide, you know, you're, you're going to struggle a little bit. Uh, you, you quite like a... A heavy stone as well, so yeah, I, I, you, you I, tend to glide well with a heavy stone. I recall thrown against someone that once described themselves as a windy dog uh, and, and the heavy <laughs> stone. Do you remember who that was? <laughs> I remember clearly, yeah. Oban, yeah, Oban. I think I was about... Just to sum up the character, the, the week after, eh? the, the, just to sum up the character of Sinclair Patience, right? <laughs> we were we were thrown uh, open. Is it open or Lorne games? It was one of them, right? It's one of them. They're the same games. <laughs> same 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 games. Same field. Different days. But we were thrown in the different, heavy different stone committees. there, and this heavy stone's like a rectangle, the rectangular stone that's also a square at the same time. It's bizarre. So yeah. we were thrown it, and I think I went like an inch in front of you. And we were kind of like having a laugh, like joking about. It was quite a, it was quite a quiet day, but quite a you know intense competition. And yeah. I remember you saying, "Watch this! I'm like a windy dog." And I'm pretty sure, <laughs> I'm pretty sure you threw the same as me in that throw. And then in your last throw, you beat me. And then just to summarise <laughs> this man's character, we went to a steakhouse after it, and the man got a burger, <laughs> cheeseburger, <huh? laughs> steak burger, steak burger. It's not the same. <laughs> But yeah, but I mean, no, that's sometimes when you get your best throws, isn't it? When it's when there's four or five of us there, sun's out, it's really relaxed. Um, you know, as opposed to like I said, there being five or six under twenty fives and then ten ten uh, professionals in the open, and you, you're there till seven o'clock at night. Whereas a nice day like that, you're throwing one till five. Um, you know, you're you're wrapped up in time to go for a for a steak or for a burger um, after making days. a bit of money. But um, yeah, I mean, in terms of a favourite moment, I find that hard to sort of sort of pinpoint. Um, if you were to ask yeah, me, well, singular... yeah, well, taking second on the at Balak is a pretty pretty good one, isn't it? I mean, I was pretty happy with that. I was I was sort of looking forward to going to um, going out to to Fergus this year and throwing in the worlds there. But yeah, for, for, that that would have been your first worlds, wouldn't it? Yeah, I mean, your your first Webster's worlds are um, yeah. Yeah, no, but it's a big one. I, I've, I think I've done five or six worlds now, and my best uh, best result at a world has been sixth place. The last last one I went to um, was a bit of a shit show. I went to I went to Canada, uh, which was a great games, but didn't didn't throw well at all. So Victoria, really nice games. I'd love to go back, um, but no, I didn't, didn't have a good one. Basically, came last. 
poor Dan Tennyson tore his bicep off, so Jesus. he didn't finish the games. But uh, I'd definitely like to, to get back to Worlds, hopefully with yourself and uh, and Lorne, who's, who's sort of... Lorne's classed as a Scot, but I reckon we can class him as a Canadian now, eh? He's been away more than two years. I see what you're doing, I like it. I can get on board <laughs> with that. But no, it'd be good to go over with you um, at some point. But mind you, Jamie's doing very well at the moment too. So I think... I think the next five years in Scotland is going to be really competitive. Um, you know, Jamie Gunn's doing very well. Murdo Masterton, again, is, he had an injury last season, but, but he's definitely on the way up. Um, yeah. You never know, Craig, Craig Sigler could could get back, well, I was, uh, back up and running. I was chatting to him over the winter, and Craig was showing a, a bit of interest in coming back this year. But uh, Yeah, I mean, Craig's not old. He'll only be, I think Craig will be 34. Yeah. Um, no one's making any comebacks this year, are they? <laughs> No, exactly, but I suppose it might it might give uh, a few guys an opportunity just to get back in shape and, and get some reps in, so no, I think the next four or five years, and then obviously you've got the foreign boys as well, Vlad, I don't think Vlad's going anywhere for the next 10 years, so... Uh, Vlad um, and then Colin and Kyle, Colin the Barker. That's right, they, yeah, they I mean, there. I was disappointed not to meet uh, the guys last year, just like I said, I, I'd probably under, under 10 games last year, but hopefully... Um, Hopefully meet them in the next couple of seasons. But yeah, Fergus, you were sort of mentioning there. It's a shame they're not getting to host the the Worlds this year. It's a, it's, it's probably one of my favourite games. Definitely in my top three games. Great, that's making me feel um, much better about it. Thanks for that. <laughs> <laughs> you definitely need to get over there. It's uh, it's more it's more Scottish than the Scottish games. Um, that's normally the case. Though. Bands, Big big stand. I think that's what what makes a games is is the atmosphere. Oh yeah. Um, so like in terms of some of my favourite games in Scotland, you'd have places like Sky. Have you ever thrown at Sky? I've never been to Sky just because Colin is like an hour's drive from me, and it's almost always in the same day. Yeah, they're on a Wednesday midweek and games. I think but Sky for me would be f- probably five six hours drive or an hour to Colin. And I can get home it's for dinner. A, it's you know? a fair trek. You, you, you should you should do it at some stage. Oh, definitely. Um, it's it, the reason I like it is I think it's maybe an old quarry, so it makes it kind of like a it's a natural arena, um, and the, the crowd are almost on top of you. It's really <laughs> cool. It's you, you feel like a gladiator. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the the caber there is horrible. Really, really. Heavy, heavy caber. I've heard um, that the one of the putts is awful as well. It like it, it tries to basically take you out by slitting your throat. Yeah, there's a sharp, a sharp putt, and then there's a there's a block weight as well. See, um, I, I, and it's not it's not a block weight like a handle on a loop. Is it like Inverary block weight? It's what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no not even that because that's still got a handle. This oh, one, wow. like the the handle's built into the weight. If you know what I mean, oh, looks yeah. like a doorstop. <laughs> Horrible, horrible thing. Um, I, I mean, can't remember. I saw Mike Zolkovich, I'm sure, do 16 foot with that. But it, I think it's maybe since been broken. Might might be Vladislav. Sure. Or what, what about uh, Colin? Doesn't Colin... Th- and- uh, maybe it was Colin. See, I was out of touch last season, but it might have been Colin. If Colin went there, it definitely would have been him. Yeah, I mean, I've not thrown that, but even uh, in the games, the, both the, the 28 and the 56 there, you throw for distance. There's not yeah, a chain in them, it's just the handle. Um, but yeah, I actually, I actually quite enjoyed throwing them this year. I mean, I'd, I'd never been to Inverary until a uh, year past. And yeah. it was quite a weird feeling. Like You come round and you think, right, here's the weight coming. And then you realise it's already in front of you and you're throwing it. <laughs> I, think, I think that's the other the other thing with, with throwing in Scotland is that I wouldn't want everything to be standardised, but there is, there's there's so much variation from, from one day to another. Um, like, if you are going to train, for example, with a 56, it's hard to know whether you train with a with a link, with no link, with a block, you know. It's, yeah. it's tough to know what to do. And it's the same even for the, like, with the weight for height. Most most of our weight for heights don't have a chain, whereas you sometimes get the odd link. Like, I know Oban has one. Um, a Boyne obviously has one. Yeah. And, you know, people will tend to throw what? six inches to maybe think, even a foot higher. Think about Lonest 56. It's got like a, a pin. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's like a foot, a foot right. 18 launch pin, uh, pin through it with a, a massive handle. Uh, yeah, it's a weird thing. Uh, you, you just have to wait for so long. And it's a strange, you feel like strange you can check your watch, right? And then, oh, there it is. I'll pull it now. 
Aye, it's a strange, strange feeling. But uh, um, see back to what you were saying about different implements. I remember uh, one season. I, I regularly sort of post just my distances. People can see them. Like people at my work are normally quite interested. Like people, people I see at the gym. So I'll just post like, oh, here's here's my distances are through, and then I'll, I'll I tend to describe the implements. And I remember uh, basically getting shit for it because I was like, oh, it was quite a dour weight, uh, like smaller, smaller link, not as long, or it was a dour hammer. And someone was basically, why are you, why are you, why do you have to do that every week? I said, well, if someone's looking at you and you're maybe going to get invited somewhere, and all of a sudden you go from throwing eighty-three feet one week to seventy-one the next, they're going to be sitting thinking, what's wrong? <laughs> Yeah, again, it's it's tough. Like, I think there's there's some great um, athletic directors, especially you know overseas. It's fine here because we can turn up wherever we want to throw. I've been pretty fortunate over the last sort of ten years to have some really good trips. Um, a number in the early days were with with Craig. Craig was throwing the, the hammers pretty well at that time. He was he was generally up about one forty, but um, it's it's tough. For, for those guys to kind of, because we don't have a, a database or, or any form of ranking, um, it's tough for them to, to know who's throwing far uh, yeah. because there's no, you know, th- it's not like we have a, a sort of governing body that will report on distances and stuff. I know there's the SHGA, but you don't know from one game to another what, what results are. You know, it just depends on the day. So I think some sort of database would definitely help. Yeah, I know, uh, I know there's a there's a few databases that have sort of been introduced in in America. Um, I know there I've seen them on sort of Instagram and uh, people sort of promoting them that they've been making themselves because I, I think Nazca's still got its place, but it's maybe not um, it's not been looked after quite as much. Uh, I'm not sure yeah. what the story is there. Uh, yeah, I've not I've not been on Nazca in years, um, but it, it would definitely help. But at the end of the day, with with, with Scotland, all, all the guys would need to do is is speak to. To a couple of the the boys, and and you'd know straight away, you know who who the top two three are. Um, yeah, just 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 the conversation, and I think we'd all be pretty honest about that as well. You know, if if we're having a an off season, you, you'd you'd a bit of an injury. Was that two years ago now? Uh, <laughs> we were live streaming some uh, <laughs> some stone training, weren't we? Yeah, you'd, you'd a bit of a tumble. <laughs> we, were, we were live streaming it, and uh, I think I was walking through the divots, and I think you were throwing. I was maybe like 15 metres away, so I thought, I'll just gently putt and roll this back. And then I went to put my foot down, and I just went over my ankle. And that, that was the start of the incredible bulk. I actually <laughs> tore ligaments in my ankle on a live stream, which I'll need to try to find. Uh, that was classic. And then I remember... Because Lauren was there as well, eh? Yeah, it was the three of us. Uh, and I remember uh, my first games back, right? See uh, Gliden with like, torn ligaments or just after them. It's the most terrifying horrible. thing in the world. Like you, I can imagine. You, oh, I still get the fear thinking about it. And then I remember it was Creef. It was my first year back since the first time I'd been there. And I tore all my stomach in the middle of throwing the heavy hammer. That's right, I was there. It was yeah, horrible. I, I tried to that. hold on to it and deliver it as well, which would probably made it even worse. I remember that. You you you, you hated Creef for a few years because, yeah, because I of that, got the didn't fear. Yeah, uh, I genuinely yeah. got the fear. So I only went back uh, well, last year. Um, it's funny how that happens. You, you associate people or places with injuries. Uh, but it's it, like when you're uh, was it Alistair Gunn maybe like <laughs> if you see if you see someone throwing and they're absolutely terrible I'm sure he'd be going don't look don't look don't look because <laughs> it actually makes you throw like that <laughs> yeah or like if, if you're coaching someone new you end up going and training and you're sitting thinking about things you're telling them and then you start uh, questioning you what you're doing thinking. and why you're doing it and, oh. it does it, it can't happen I've been, I've been trying to get out and, and just like ingrain reps so I've been just trying to swing the hammer for sets of 50, maybe do five sets for the light and then onto the heavy and definitely works. But then you come, you you think you're going to come out and throw 10 feet further, but I still have a really bad tendency to pull in on the release. So it it doesn't always work. Do you mean that? I'll get uh, there. I'll get there. The bicep tricep (laughs) approach. (laughs) Absolutely. There's a few plays like that. It's uh, it's funny. I'm, I've managed to over the last sort of few years. Uh, whenever the gym I train, it was sort of throwing out weights. They'd just go out in the, the sort of back, and I'd I'd grab them because they're going in the skip essentially. So yeah. I, I've got uh, about seventy k. I've actually got one hundred and ten k in weights, but um, I've only got I've got three twenty five k plates and a fifteen, and I, I don't know about loading one side of the bar ten kilos more than the other. So <laughs> I've I've been doing. Uh, I've actually just been doing deadlifts with like one hundred and twenty weight with two fifty sixes hanging off. 
And oh, that, have you? That, I mean, I've just been doing 10 sets of 10 uh, once a week and see my yeah. forearms the first week. Uh, I'm honestly not joking you. Typing was a, typing was a chore. Oh, it's it's just different different movements. Even when you do that, you're brushing your teeth the next morning, and everything hurts. You're wondering oh. what's going on, but I think that's probably good for you. Just just changing things up instead of the, like grind of normal everyday weight. Too. Yeah, so I, I've I've been sort of I've had a working weight of about seventy kilos, so I reckon I'll be probably one of the most competent seventy kilo lifters uh, <laughs> around when this whole thing finishes. I've even uh, uh, I've even sent my bike away to um, to someone to get it fixed. I might go out my bike again. Uh, get on get on, get on the cardio. Uh, well, I've already been doing a bit. I've been doing some circuits and whatnot. But uh, back to our favourite games, I've got to say, I know a lot of people are like, oh, Braemar's up there for me just because of the occasion. Um, yeah, undoubtedly yeah. the biggest in Scotland. Um, yeah, numbers wise, it's it's massive. Um, and there's obviously like, history as well. Yeah, there's a few. There's a few of the uh, the Grampian games that are, are are like that. They're they're kind of prestigious. You, you know, you'd probably have a Boyne, Lonich, Ballard stands Braemar. out for me. I, I'm a big fan of Ballard games, but I'm Ballard's the same. Yeah, it's it's another big one, isn't it? Um, See, to be honest, all all I mean. All if not most of the the Glen Feather games, they all stand out to me. Your your Grampian games, they're all they're all pretty special. And then most of the games down here, I've got a lot of memories with them because that's what I grew up doing. Uh, you know, what I mean, going, going with my dad, my granddad to most of the games, and and them having having a little beverage whilst we're there. And yeah, no, for, exactly. Like, some food I, on the way back. I I I'd, I'd be pretty similar. I, I think there's obviously your your big games, and for me, some of the North games would would count there. So. Hulkirk's always a, a really good day, but then also some games in the amateur circuit. So um, I really enjoy Inverness games, especially when they're they're held in the Northern Meeting Park, which is an old uh, an old stadium in Inverness. There's and again, history there, this eh? comes down comes down to the atmosphere, doesn't it? You know, you get you get the crowd engagement, and it's it's a good day. But at times with those amateur games, you, you can feel like a a big fish in a small pond, and then uh, you, you go down the road to a professional games on, on the Sunday and. Uh, and you realise where you're at, you know. I, I see. I still find it funny, and this is probably a topic for another time. But what you're saying is, you can go to some games, and it's called the Highland Games, and you're sitting there uh, throwing the hammer. Like I've been at games where, like the, for example, like Vlad's attempting a ground record in the weight for height, and the commentators over like commentating on a, a kid's hundred yards. It's like what, what's, what's going on here? So absolutely, I, I get, it's good. I get. So that that put, that puts things in perspective that we're we're throwing stones in a field. You know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> clowns, <laughs> isn't it? We're not we're clowns. We're 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 we're, uh, we're 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 called pros, but are, are we in any way pros? <laughs> we're, we're pros in our own backyard. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And that's that's you know, it's probably what a lot of us need to remember. Um, although saying that, I think at times we we are competing at, at a reasonable level, you know, and. People have come and tried, and and they've come and failed. So, um, you know, when when we're throwing our best, we we, we can uh, be at a decent level. You know, especially if you look at the the guys that are top three at worlds. You know, most of them have pretty strategic. You know, th their backgrounds in sport yeah. are pretty uh, prestigious. Um, th th this this could move on nicely to um, where do you see the the, sp the the sport or Highland Games heavy events going in the future? Like, what do you think lies in store? Say short term. I think I think uh, you could have a fair bit of debate about that, and I've I've heard a lot of things recently about the growth of the sport worldwide and is drug testing a barrier? Those types of conversation. Um, I think in here. You know, in Scotland, we're we're pretty fortunate because we've got we've got a, a drug testing program through UK Anti Doping, so they can turn up randomly at any Highland Games um, and test any any heavy event athlete. So, in terms of growth, I don't think that's a barrier. Um, I think we do need to to push the growth at the younger age groups. So, the under twenty five certainly has has room for growth. Definitely. And, yeah. In terms of how we do that, things like development officers would, would massively help. So my my kind of background in employment is, is sport development, and I worked as a rugby development officer. I think if we had something similar for uh, for Highland Games, you know, we, we might need to 
to work with the Scottish Highland Games Association and maybe approach the Scottish government or something once once everything's kind of so, uh, blown over with this coronavirus. But I think just three or four development officers throughout the country would have a, a massive impact on the numbers. But then there obviously needs to be somewhere for athletes to go. So um, the games, individual Highland Games, also need a bit of support with their governance. Um, so basically the committees, I think, need a bit of support just, just in terms of planning for the future and getting getting new blood in. Because if you look at most of our Highland Games committees around the country, they're kind of, you know, they're, they're getting on. The, in terms of ages, they're, they're, they're definitely up there. Oh, yeah. um, if we could get younger, maybe newly retired throwers into, into the sport, whether it be as judges or sitting on committees, that would definitely help the, the growth of the games. And then I suppose it's not just the heavy events that we need to consider because there's there's so many other things that go on at the games. There's athletics, there's cycling, there's Highland dancing, there's pipe bands. So just growing that kind of community aspect of it as well is definitely going to help things in terms of sustainability. But what do you think? Is it you I think see, it's kind of I mean, still on the up? Like I know there's there's loads of chat that the Scottish throwers aren't aren't coming through. And that, that might be, you know, the, the, we don't have massive representation at the very top level of worlds. But saying that, often when when, uh, when throwers from, from overseas do come to Scotland, we're very much competing with them, you know, certain in certain events and sometimes in, in the overall. And I think you found that last season. Um, you know, weren't a mile off the pace there, so... I don't. I'm. I'm not too concerned about the growth in terms of heavies yeah. coming through. This I don't is, know. Do you, do you think differently? Or? No, I, I'd probably agree. Agree for the main part of everything you've said to, to an extent. But the biggest thing for me, right, is I don't know how you feel about this as a thrower. Anyone listening would feel. But see, when you've been training all year for a games, like say you go to like one of the grandpians and you're there to really compete, like it's, yeah. it's a competitive league. Like every point matters. And then Joe Bloggs from the crowd walks out and decides he wants to have a go and then the committees think, oh, this is great. Like, yeah. that adds to your day, it makes it longer and that can affect things going on and it can be quite frustrating. So I, I've sort of wondered if we should have a sort of like a low-level entry league type thing. So say, yeah. say three or four games a year where anyone can turn up, there's not a massive crowd. Um, you could get some heavies from around the area, wherever it's held, to, to help run it and officiate it. And then you have a competition and say if, if people are starting to show promise in that, Games. I'm. I'm not saying we have an an invite system. I think we should keep the open. But perhaps games could be reaching out and saying, "Listen, if you'd like to come up, or us as heavies, we can do our part and sort of spread the word that way." Um, I know the SGA have been trying to do their bit with the training days, which I think is a good thing. Um, because it has to yeah. be said, what you were saying about the young throwers, right? Um, at the same time, for someone say say you've got, I mean, let's use a powerlifter for example, who decides they want to try the Highland Games. Now they've got all the power there, but they've none of the knowledge. So if they yeah. turn up and just decide I'm going to compete, not only can they injure themselves, um, it obviously makes it can make the day a lot longer, and it can I don't want to say affect the integrity of the competition, but you know what I mean. It can, I mean, someone's there who's, who's not totally aware of what they should or shouldn't be doing. Um, yeah. If you were to have something like a training day where they can go along and acquire a little bit of knowledge and go away and work on it, like they've got the they've got the tools at their disposal to be able to throw, you know. So. I mean, I, I personally, I think that would be a good idea. I mean, it's great being able to say it; it's the practicality of actually doing it. But you know, I'd like to see these training days sort of take off, and if they can, they can go somewhere with them. Training days would be good, and then I think uh, local or novice events, maybe in the morning of of bigger events. Yeah, say like a would, hammer, would help a hammer as well. putt caber, or a hammer putt weight. You know, the easier, the easier events, uh, the safer ones. Yeah, no, definitely, and and I think. We probably need to look, to look at ourselves in, in building that and, and making that happen too as current throwers. Um, but we probably also have a have a bit of a role in getting getting past throwers involved as well. And yeah. that's that's kind of what we're going to try and do with this podcast as well, isn't it? We're going I mean, to, over the next number of months when we're not we're not able to compete, we're we're hoping to to, to get these guys on the podcast and um, have them talk about their experiences in the games, what it's kind of brought them and where they'd, lead, they'd maybe like to see the sport go, I think. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's the thing. It's a, an, an ancient sport, we'll call it, with so many traditions, but, I mean, the, how does it move into the modern age? 
Uh, not not just in terms of capturing an audience, but also participants. Um, definitely, definitely. But uh, but yeah, I mean, the the future is something that God, you could talk about this for for an eternity, and you, you'd, you'd always come up with new points and and, and new reasons that you can uh, you can argue. <laughs> no, definitely. But no, I, I'm looking forward to uh, to speaking initially to some of these to some of these ex throwers, and then who knows? We'll maybe we'll maybe look to expand and. Uh, go overseas with this as well eh? oh yeah i mean i don't need to jump into a voice call and chat away Um where where this is a big question right i hope you're sit down you put your seatbelt on Um <laughs> what, what lies in sinclair patience's future in the highland oof. games oof oof um no good question i think i think last year like i said to you i'd i had a pretty frustrating uh year last year and maybe even the year before i've i've had a fair bit of movement and jobs um and we obviously had a, a wee one arrive last year my dad was phoning me every weekend and he'd, he'd been at more highland games than me <laughs> and he was absolutely winding me up um he, hearing about all these throws and all these nice days at the games so i'd uh i'm i'm training hard at the moment and, and my main focus is kind of trying to just cut a bit of weight and and like i said get myself back to more sort of rugby shape um that that tends to be where i throw my best um because i played a lot of rugby in, in games years i'm pro- probably not that old you know you, you've probably thrown uh in games years for longer than i have uh so i'd certainly like to think i can still have have personal best in, in every single event um i'm 33 at the moment and i'd like to like to think i'd i'd throw till i'm kind of late 30s maybe even 40s so um definitely get back to worlds uh be one of the 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 top three scots and yeah just just compete well and consistently over the next kind of five six years i think is is my uh my aim yourself makes sense i think all that's achievable for for me i wouldn't mind uh i mean it was going to happen this year but go go to one of the one of the webster's worlds and get a sort of eyes on there for for what What's involved yeah. with that and what 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 lies with that? Um, I was looking forward to that. Uh, another, I, I really enjoyed the Glen Fiddick the last two years. It's been kind of close with myself and Lucas, and obviously Jamie's been uh, been there. Um, I know he's been um, off doing some of the IHGF like uh, the series things and that, so he misses a few games. Yeah. Um, but it's been a good competition, and I think this year Bray Mart sort of went down to, uh, and it was a very a very close run thing. So I was looking forward to this year uh, having another episode of the fighting. Um, but uh, obviously that's not going to be and yeah I, I just want to try and stay consistent the biggest thing for me is I experienced it one year with two sort of bad injuries is just to try and stay injury free there's nothing worse than going to a games and having to throw it like 75-80% because you're not 100%, sure if you can... and even if you haven't been training as you know you should have been like last year I mentioned that I did under 10 and one of them was, was Hallkirk Um and I, by no means through through badly, like I was still about eighty in the weight, and uh, you know it wasn't a bad bad day, but just nowhere near what I knew I, I should be doing. And then um, you have that and, thought, and in you the just back get of you. really really frustrated. Yeah, yeah. The thoughts in the uh, back of your head: if I'd been training, what could I just have done? <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. And it's not even about money or anything. You know, it's it's just about knowing in yourself that. That you're not, and and nobody else cares. Like literally, nobody else cares. <laughs> you know, you you were saying some people will pick up your distances on on Facebook, um, but it's quite a it's quite a small world. The Highland Games, and nobody really knows um, what what those distances mean apart from ourselves. You know, yeah. Uh, and I mean, for us, they matter, well, and that's that's probably the most important thing it's, it's basically <laughs> we, we need something to grasp onto it's like an imperial <laughs> uh, imperial measurements in a, a metric world is what, what we're basically reporting on you know what i mean <laughs> exactly. like mo- most things in uh, most things in scotland and um rockland in britain are are in uh, imperial and we here's we feet inches stone pounds <laughs> i look at everything that way now though yeah. someone asked me how big my garden is oh well <laughs> you know what i mean you start you start to think about the world that way Patience Manor, surely your garden will be at least uh, a couple of acres, no? <laughs> you couldn't throw the hammer in it anyway. No, no, no. I've been in my garden swinging the hammer. That's about all I maybe, can Maybe do not here. even the weight now. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, so I think I think we've obviously both got got good goals and, and hopefully we'll, we will be kind of 
competing well against each other for the next five, six years, but maybe also uh, overseas as well. You know, that, that'd be pretty cool to, to get a trip, especially if you could get over to the likes of Fergus, which, like I said, is a really great games, and throw with Lauren. Lauren, Lauren won it, I think, last year. Um, oh, yeah, Jamie that, went over, cool, didn't he? Jamie went over, yeah, yeah. It, it, it'd be cool to get that little... Uh, that little crew back so I mean it was kind of you and Jamie coming up I came up with Craig Sinclair and then in, in the middle um, so <laughs> throwing fire at the time was, was Lauren yeah so it'd be, it'd be cool to get us uh, get us all in the same field again as you could say we get the band back together exactly exactly uh, here's a, an interesting thing that occurred to me the other day so I uh, I was obviously meant to go out to Malaysia and um, of course it was like the day I think it was a day or two days before the whole quarantine thing kicked in. So I was actually meant to be in Malaysia competing about a month, two months ago, but that went that went tits up. Potentially my first games this year, right? Other than being super optimistic about even having won games in Scotland, my next Highland Games I compete in could technically be uh, in New Zealand at New Year, and even that's, that's right. in doubt. That's right. I heard you're heading over. That that'll be a that'll be a good uh, a good trip. That one. I'd love to go to New Zealand just because of the rugby connection as well. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it's kind of cool scary place. that... I mean, the other funny thing is, <laughs> obviously, um, there was a team of five of us went to Florida in January. We could be the we could be the only Scottish throwers to actually throw this year. I'm not sure if there was any games in America, but... Uh, well, you, you, you won... Uh, I know you won the Hammers. That, that was a given, but... You won the... You won, oh, no, I was just I was just about to tell some lies. I was going to say, you may have the furthest competitive... Uh, Stone pot oh, in the world. I'd be getting a t-shirt year, with that. I know it. Spencer put an eighteen-pound uh, shot over fifty-five foot of the yeah, arm. Well, it wasn't a sixteen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. You've got the furthest sixteen-pound stone. I, I don't in the think world, I do. I think uh, I think Hayden actually uh, beat it at games afterwards. I, I honestly can't say I, I've checked since, but I'll maybe jump on Nazga and have a look. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean. Uh, I suppose we could do episode two next week if uh, if there's enough interest for it, and we can maybe get some points. Yeah, together. well, th- things things are pretty pretty quiet um, at the moment. But if, if people want to get in touch with us, they can just fire us a message on on Facebook, here on Instagram, um, and if anyone wants to be on the podcast as well, get get in touch with us, and we'll easily uh, come on and have a bit of a chat. We've got nothing better to do. You need to <laughs> you need to go through our, our ten point. Uh, application yeah. process though to, to <laughs> yeah, obviously yeah, yeah. get yourself in, in the hot seat but yeah I mean yeah. I'll just say I've quite enjoyed this little chat it's nice reminiscing when you've got basically nothing to look forward to for the, the rest of the summer so absolutely yeah I nah, mean, it's been good if folks do have suggestions as uh, Sinclair said just ping us a message on any of the social media if there's any topics you'd like discussed or I mean I guess I, I could offer bad advice I suppose you've got some good advice <laughs> you could offer but we can always do that <laughs> but uh, yeah just thank, thanks to anybody for listening and we'll hopefully catch you on the next one Good stuff, right? Cheers, Kyle. I'll catch you soon. Take it easy.